Elasticsearch helps you search through unstructured text, which is text that doesn't follow a specific format, like natural language. This is text that doesn't follow a specific format, like sentences in a book or articles online. Elasticsearch can search through this type of text using full text queries. For example, imagine you want to find all movies directed by someone named James. You can use Elasticsearch's search API to do this. This query asks Elasticsearch to find all documents like movie records where the director's name is James. When you send this query, Elasticsearch looks through its data, finds the matching documents, and sends them back to you. For example, in our case, it will find a movie directed by James Cameron and return it. You can search for the director's name in different ways, like shown below. All these will work, but if you search for a short name like Jam, it won't work. To search for shortened names, we can use a prefix query as shown here. This query will find names that start with jam, like James. In Elasticsearch, a prefix query is a type of search that looks for terms starting with a specific prefix. This means the search looks for exact terms, words, in the data. When using a prefix query, the search term must be in lowercase because Elasticsearch stores terms in lowercase to ensure consistency and accuracy during searches. For example, if you want to find names starting with jam, you need to write it in lowercase. We have indexed two documents in our movies index. If we modify the query to search for the director name, James Smith, what result would you expect? Since we don't have any movies directed by James Smith, the query should return no results, right? However, that's not the case. The movies directed by James Cameron and Cameroon Smith will still be returned. This happens because the search engine is looking for any movies directed by either James or Smith using the OR operator implicitly. To refine this query, we can define a parameter called operator and explicitly set it to AND. This requires a slight modification to the query, adding an object that includes both the query and the operator to the director field. Executing this query will return a single movie document, which is Titanic, directed by James Cameron. The end operator will attempt to retrieve all documents where the director field has the value James Cameron. When we search for something, it doesn't have to be limited to just one area. For example, if we are looking for documents that mention adventure, we don't just search the titles. We also look in the synopsis and tags. This is called a multi-field search. Here's how you can search for adventure in both the title and synopsis fields using Elasticsearch. The query searches for the term adventure in the title and synopsis fields of the documents in Movies Index. It returns documents that match the search term in either or both fields. Relevancy scores are calculated based on how well a document matches the query. Factors include term frequency, that is how often the term appears, and field matches, that is which fields contain the term. A higher score indicates a better match to the search term. In this case, the first document is more relevant because adventure appears in both the title and synopsis, contributing to a higher score. The second document is less relevant as adventure only appears in the synopsis, resulting in a lower score. The multi-match query works like the match query, but lets you search in multiple fields. You just need to specify the search term and the fields you want to search in. When we search for something in multiple fields, we might want to give more importance to certain fields to get the best results. Elasticsearch lets us do this by adding a boost factor to fields. For example, to give the title field three times more importance, we add title caret three next to it in the search query. So the search query would look like this. This way, the title field has more weight in the search results, meaning documents with adventure in the title will appear higher up. By boosting the title, we've effectively increased the importance of that field in the search results. Documents with the term adventure in the title will have higher scores than those with the term in the synopsis. This way, we can ensure that the most relevant documents, based on the boosted field, appear at the top of the search results. At times, we wish to search for a sequence of words exactly in a given order, like finding all movies that have the phrase unexpected adventure in the synopsis field. 
we can write a match phrase query for this purpose. This query searches for the sequence of words unexpected adventure in the synopsis field across all our movies and returns the movie Deep Sea Adventure. Let's see how to highlight a portion of text in the return document that matches our original query. For example, when we search for a word or a phrase on a blog site, the site usually shows the matching text with some sort of highlighting using colors or shading. We can achieve the same effect for our results using a convenient feature called highlighting. To do this, we modify our search query by providing a highlight object in the request body at the same level as the query object. In the highlight object, we can set the fields to which we want to apply a highlight. For example, here we tell the engine to set the highlights on the synopsis object. The final outcome is something like this, where match is highlighted with an HTML markup tag, M, indicate words that are emphasized. We can rely on match phrase for exact phrase searches. Suppose we are searching for the phrase, underwater exploration, turns into an unexpected adventure. The query will return documents that contain the exact phrase, underwater exploration, turns into an unexpected adventure. But what happens if we leave out one or two words of the phrase? For example, does the query work if we ask it to search for underwater exploration, turns unexpected adventure? The query won't yield results if you rerun it after removing those two words. The match phrase query expects a full phrase, a phrase that isn't missing any words. However, users may not always input exact phrases. To handle this, Elasticsearch's solution is to set a slop parameter on the match phrase query, a positive integer indicating how many words the phrase is missing when searching. In this query, the slop of two indicates that the search query can expect up to two words to be either missing or not in order when the query is executed. This way, Elasticsearch can still find relevant results even if the exact phrase isn't used. Sometimes, people make spelling mistakes when searching. Modern search engines are smart enough to show the right results despite these errors. Elasticsearch uses a technique called the Levenstein Edit Distance to find similar words, dealing with mistakes using a match query with a fuzziness setting. If fuzziness is set to 1, it allows for one spelling error, like one letter being wrong, missing, or added. For example, if we have documents in the movie's index with the tag mystery and someone searches for mastery in the tags field, they normally wouldn't find any results since it's misspelled, and we don't have documents with the tag mastery. But with the following match query, Elasticsearch can handle this error. Fuzzy queries find terms similar to the search term using Levenstein's edit distance. In this example, we need to change the letter A to Y to find the correct word. The edit distance method changes one word to another by making single character changes. The fuzziness function doesn't just replace a letter, but can also add or delete characters to find a match. So mastery can become mystery by changing just one letter. We've been searching through text data using full text queries so far. But Elasticsearch also supports searching for more structured data, like numbers, dates, or IP addresses. For this, we use something called term level queries. Term level queries are different from full text queries. Full text queries analyze text to find matches, while term level queries look for exact matches without breaking down the text. For example, let's look at a movie document. When we add this document to Elasticsearch, it analyzes the fields to understand the data. For instance, IMDB rating is recognized as a number, a floating point number because it has a decimal. Release date is recognized as a date. These fields are considered non-text fields, meaning they are stored as they are without breaking them into smaller parts, that is tokens, or applying any transformations like finding synonyms. Term level queries return results if the query exactly matches the criteria. They don't care about how well the documents match the query, they just check if there's a match or not. This means term level queries don't produce a relevancy score. A term query is used to fetch exact matches for a value provided in the search criteria. For example, to fetch all movies with an IMDB rating of 7.8, we can write a term query as shown here. 
We want to display just two fields title and IMDB rating in the response document. Declares the query as a term level query. Provides the field and value as search criteria. We can use range query to fetch results that match a range. For example, fetching movies with IMDB rating between 7 and 8. The range query can be applied to dates, numerals, and other attributes, making it a powerful companion when searching for range data.